It's a short hop from the Deben to the next river, the Or. The coast is a long shingled beach. The main redeeming feature is Bordsey Manor, easy to see from the water. It belonged to the Quilter family, whose only interesting bit of history is that they employed Percy Thrower's father as a gardener, which will mean nothing to the Americans who watch these films, but here he is with Benny Hill, so he was pretty famous. Then it got much more interesting when it passed into the hands of the RAF. It was a top secret establishment where they developed radar, initially bouncing the massively powerful BBC signals off aeroplanes. The stately pile housed the officers' mess, where it was a tradition for new WAFs to have their feet dipped in ink before turning them upside down and getting them to leave inky footprints on the ceiling. My my, what jolly japes these people had in defending the realm. Later on, during the Cold War, it became the base for Bloodhound missiles, designed to down the bombers that were expected to fly in from Russia. They had a range of 20 miles and could fly at Mach 2 and looked as though they'd come straight out of a James Bond film. You can still see the launch sites from Google Earth. Then the coast gets really dull until you get to the entrance to the River Ore. It gives access to a delightful river system, which is where I'll be spending the winter. It's sheltered and labyrinthine. Loads of places to explore in a small boat. You can drop a hook almost anywhere into the deep, soft, encompassing mud, so anchors never drag. And for those with a mind to, there are plenty of places where you can step ashore. On the river system there's the Ore itself, which lies behind the massive shingle spit of Orford Ness. There's a bird reserve at Havergate Island. The delightful Buckley River, quiet and secluded. There's the estuary village of Orford with loads of pubs. There's the mysterious Orford Ness with its pagodas and transmitter masts. And then up to the River Ald, which snakes its way clear through to the top of the navigation at Snake Maltings. Plenty to entertain me over the coming five months of winter. But first, there's the entrance to the ore to navigate. Fortunately, Martin, the bloke who owns the Bolger on the Deben, is with me, and a bit of local knowledge is a wonderful thing, especially when the cheap eBay echo sounder is packed up, yet again. By the time we get to the bar, the tide is ebbing fiercely and it's a case of cranking up the beast and bashing along the edge of the shingle in an attempt to stay out of the four knot tide. Have you touched the bottom yet? Still not. Still not touched the bottom. No, still not touched the bottom. <laughs> there, just on the bottom now. <laughs> just there. Look at that. And it's gone. Clear here. Yeah, gone again. First lesson about the ore then, don't ignore the tide. It's gone. I'm going to go in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually touch the bottom now. The entrance doesn't look much from Google Earth because the image was taken at high tide, but down at water level, when the tide's out, it's much more interesting. Through the winter, I was to become a frequent visitor to the bar and its shingle spit. I'd drift down with the tide, 
and then shoved the slug's bow up against the steepest bit I could find and jump ashore with the anchor. I'm going to go ashore on the bar and so steep too, I don't need to change my shoes. It's an amazing shape-shifter of a place. Each wave, each tide, each storm rearranges the shingle spit in some way. The waves and currents continually grading and shifting the shingle into graceful organic curves. moves around a bit but it never really quits. It's all in or all out because there's one hell of a lot of water has to get through here and it's quite a narrow gap. Ah oh, you are a shifty old son of a gun you look at you. Great place. Orford Ness is growing at a formidable speed and at one time here the River Ald exited at Aldborough, several miles up the coast. At the spit, you can almost see geography happening. I met a bloke in a pub in Aldborough and he told me an incredible story about the bar. The first time a zeppelin went over the entrance to the Ore and it could be seen from the air, the gravel was miraculously arranged into three perfectly clear letters. G. O. D. Several people on the Zeppelin saw it and swore that it was true. The next time it went over, they had a cameraman on board. But the East Coast had been subjected to one of its occasional summer easterly gales and the formation had changed completely. But I can't find any documentary evidence of this story anywhere. But us humans are often very happy to believe things that aren't true, especially where tales of gods are concerned. But I'm just a know-nothing sailor, and I don't believe anything unless there's really good evidence. All I can tell you is that the shingle spit, the entrance to the ore, can be a spiritual place. <laughs>